Shout out to Tokyo Treat and Sakurako for sponsoring this video. Hello everyone! In this week's video, I'll be drawing myself into three anime screenshots. Uh, so hi! I'm back from my break. I had a nice break. I got to catch up on some video games I've wanted to play and manga that I wanted to read. But it is nice to be back making videos. I made a post asking all of you what anime I should draw myself into. And one of the suggestions that had a decent number of votes was Your Lie in April. Which is a coincidence because I was planning to draw myself into that anime. <laughs> so the scene I'm drawing myself into takes place in like episode 4 or 5 I think. Arima's going to be playing the piano alongside Kaori, who will be playing the violin. Usually when I draw myself into anime, I try to pick either episodes 1 or 2. That way there's not much for spoilers. But I remembered about this scene of people being nervous backstage before they perform and I thought I would fit in pretty well with this scene. Uh, so as you saw, I took Kaori from another screenshot and I'm using her as my base. She was crouching down to talk to Arima, but I'm going to change the pose a bit to make it look like I'm really nervous or sick to my stomach. <laughs> I say this in all of these kind of videos, but I draw over pre-existing characters that way I can match the style of the anime and it looks convincing. I don't want people to get mad at me for tracing things. I'm not trying to deceive people or be like I drew this 100% on my own. I do show that I'm tracing over the character just to get the style more correct. Uh, but anyways, when I was first looking for a scene to draw myself into, the characters kept being at school and I thought maybe I could draw myself there. But then after thinking about it more, I thought of this scene. Oh, and here I'm moving on to the line art. The line art is all the same width, so I'm using the 4 effect line pen like I usually do. It doesn't change in width when I draw, so it works really well for anime line art. Uh, anyways, back to what I was saying. I felt like I would fit well in this scene because I used to play the piano a lot. I do still play it occasionally, but not as often as I used to. But since I can play an instrument, I thought it might be funny to have me back here with all the other nervous musicians. Back when I took piano lessons, my piano teacher would have a yearly recital, and I always thought of a way to not have to participate in it. <laughs> I took lessons for two or three years, and each year my mom and I would always come up with a reason as to why I couldn't take part in it, because I would get really bad stage fright. I think one of the years I actually had a ballet recital and that's why I couldn't do it. And you might be thinking, wait, you couldn't play piano on stage, but you could go and dance on stage? Uh, well, I would get very nervous to dance as well, but it wasn't as intimidating because I wasn't the only one on stage. And plus, if I didn't show up for that, it would throw everyone off in the spacing and all of that, so I kind of needed to be there. <laughs> I do remember before going on to perform, one of the girls came up to me asking if I was okay, probably because it looked like I was going to pass out or something. <laughs> I remember being really nervous. Uh, so now I'm on to the coloring. I took most of my colors from the girl in the background. My siblings kept saying the girl in the back kind of looks like me and I should just draw some glasses on her. <laughs> uh, but I don't play the violin. I guess I could have edited that out. Uh, but it sounded more fun to actually draw myself into the scene instead of just slapping glasses on a character. Uh, I never really wear long fancy dresses, but I tried to design a dress that I felt like I would wear, maybe. And I made it a light teal color because I like that color. Your Lie in April is one of my favorite anime, even though it's kind of sad. It's about Arima who used to compete in music competitions, but after a traumatic event, he could no longer hear his piano playing. It's like a mental block. Uh, the anime is kind of about him having the courage to play the piano again, and Kaori helps him along the way. I guess the anime actually got a dubbed version. I watched the subbed version because that was the only one at the time. If you like drama anime with a bit of romance, this is a good one to watch. Especially if you like musical instruments and stuff, the animation of them playing instruments is so good. It's really well done. And overall, the animation is just really pretty. I kind of wish I would have drawn myself into a prettier scene to really show off the anime style. Uh, but yeah, I felt like this scene would work well for drawing myself into. <laughs> so here's me in Your Lie in April. When my sister Reagan saw this, she said, it looks like you're going to hurl. I replied, good, that's what I was going for. <laughs> Next, I'll draw myself into an anime that wasn't requested by anyone. 
But first I want to thank Tokyo Treat and Sakura Co. for sponsoring this video. Tokyo Treat and Sakura Co. are both subscription boxes that share Japanese culture to the world through the medium of snacking. If you want to enjoy pop Japanese snacks, you can choose Tokyo Treat, but if you want traditional Japanese treats, you can enjoy Sakura Co. instead. Tokyo Treat and Sakura Co.'s boxes come with a different theme every month, keeping things exciting and fresh. First, let's take a look at Tokyo Treat. The Tokyo Treat boxes are full of popular Japanese candy and snacks, like Japan exclusive Kit Kat, Ramune, Ramen, and many more. February's theme is Sweet and Snacky Valentines. Tokyo Treat provides a booklet inside the box explaining every snack included. There is also a Japanese culture corner and contest information you can take a look at as well. Like I said, this box is packed full of all kinds of fun snacks, a drink, and even a whole bowl of soman noodles. Two of my favorite snacks are the strawberry milk Kit Kats and sweet choco croissant. You get a whole bag of Kit Kats and the packaging is so adorable. Not only are they adorable, they're also really yummy and have a light strawberry taste. It's super good. What's also really good is this choco croissant. It's super soft bread with chocolate in the middle. I shared this with my siblings and we all really liked it. Oh, also, the box is always ordered in the preceding month. If you want to get this February box I have here, you need to order it before the end of January. So now let's take a look at the Sakura Ko box. Sakura Ko is full of authentic, traditional Japanese snacks from Japan's local artisan snack makers. Like the Tokyo Cheat Box, it also comes with a booklet that tells you about the snacks, Japanese culture, and contests. There are so many wonderful snacks in this box. There's also the strawberry jelly wrapped with a bow. It's so cute. And there's even tea. At the bottom, there was a white box and I was curious as to what was inside. When I opened it, I found this really neat Tamabuchi Karakusa pattern side dish. There are five different patterns you can get and this is the one I got. It's so cool. I think it's really neat that they give you a little side dish. Two of my favorite snacks from this box are the Pinko Koshi and heart-shaped strawberry chocolate arare. These pinko koshi are crispy rice snacks flavored with a light layer of syrup. They are super yummy and I love the color. They are so cute. These mini crackers covered in chocolate are super good. They have this balance of salty and sweet and it kind of keeps you coming back for more. I keep snacking on them when I'm working at my computer. <laughs> Tokyo Treat and Sakura Co. boxes make great gifts. My mom got my sister Ruth a subscription box to Tokyo Treat as a Christmas gift. It was a gift for her, but all of us have enjoyed trying the snacks together. These Valentine's Day boxes would be great gifts for Valentine's Day. Like I said, if you want to get these February boxes, you need to order before the end of January. There are links in the description and pinned comment. Okay, now back to drawing. So like I mentioned, no one suggested this anime, but it's one of my favorites, so I'm going to draw myself into My Roommate is a Cat. Um, so finding a scene to draw myself into for this anime was kind of hard. The main character, Mikazuki, is like always at home, and it'd be weird for me to be in his house. So I had to find a scene where he wasn't at home. <laughs> So after searching through some of the episodes, I found the part where Mikazuki is at a pet store because he needs to find food for the cat that he kind of accidentally adopted. I don't have pets, so I wouldn't really need to go to the pet store, um, but my brother does, so maybe I'm at the store buying stuff for them. To place myself in the background, I took the girl character Okami from a different scene and put her in this one to use as my base. This base was actually a bit tricky to use for two reasons. One, she's wearing an apron. I'm not working at the pet store, so I'm not wearing an apron. Because of this, I had to figure out how to draw my lower body in a way that seems to fit in. The second tricky part was that my base was very small originally. I made it large to fit into the scene, but when you take a drawing that is small, some of the style is kind of lost. Like it kind of looks a bit different compared to the art that's drawn larger. So part of me feels like the style doesn't totally match up in the end. I don't know, maybe I'm being too picky. It's always hard for me to tell if my drawings are convincing since I'm the one drawing them. <laughs> like with the last scene, I'm using the 4 effect line pen. Also, the program I'm using is Clip Studio Paint. My brush size when I do line art is usually around 2.5 or 3, but more recently, I find 2.7 is a good size to use. Also, line art in anime often isn't pure black. It's often more of an off black, like a dark gray, sometimes with a bit of color to it. In this case, the line art is brown. I like the use of brown line art. It can help make things feel warmer and kind of soft. 
Now I'm on to the coloring. If you're ever wondering how I fill in the line art with the base colors, even though I have the background visible, I do this by setting my line art layer as my reference layer. And then I set the paint bucket tool to only fill in the reference layer. This makes it so I can fill in the line art without needing to turn the screenshot on and off when I'm grabbing colors. It definitely makes things a lot easier. I got most of my base colors from Mikazuki. I did have to slightly tweak them to make them a little bit different. And I did need to make my own brown for the hair. My roommate as a cat is a really nice anime to watch. It's kind of a slice of life with a bit of drama. Mikazuki lost his parents, so he's all alone now. He's really introverted and he works as a writer, so he prefers being alone. But the anime is kind of about him letting people back into his life and enjoying the company of others. You also get to see things from the cat's point of view. And it's just a really cute anime. I recommend it. It's really adorable and kind of relaxing to watch. Uh, but it is a bit sad at times. Oh, also, I never explained what's going on in this scene. Uh, basically, there was a misunderstanding and Mikazuki is embarrassed because he answered Okami's questions incorrectly. He thought she was asking about him, but she was asking about the cat and this led to some misunderstandings. And now he's really embarrassed. He gets embarrassed kind of easily. <laughs> So here is me and my roommate is a cat. In the scene, I'm trying to buy some dog treats when I come across this kind of odd looking situation. This last anime was highly requested by many of you and it is Toilet Bound Hanako-kun. I've never watched this anime before, so to find a scene to draw myself into, I watched through episode one, but I couldn't find any good scenes in that one, so I also watched episode two. I came across the scene where Nina is in her classroom and I thought I could place myself in the middle. I did a little bit of searching for a base I could use and I found Nina in this position in a scene that takes place a few moments later. I'll have to figure out the lower part of the base myself, but overall it should work nicely. Because my drawing needs to look like it's behind the characters, I outline them so I know where I need to stop drawing. I don't want to draw over the characters. I couldn't find a scene to draw myself into in episode 1 because the whole episode is basically just Nene and Hanako together. There were a couple scenes I could have maybe squeezed myself into, but it just didn't feel like it would work nicely. So I'm happy I found this scene in episode 2. I've always kind of heard people talk about Toilet Bound Hanako-kun and many of you have been wanting to see me draw myself into it. I wasn't sure what I was expecting when I was going into this anime, but it wasn't really what I was expecting. <laughs> it's a lot more shoujo-y than what I thought it was going to be. From what I've seen, it's like you took some horror, a little shonen, and shoujo and mushed them all together. It does get kind of creepy since it revolves around yokai and ghosts, or they call them apparitions in the anime. Uh, so it's not totally my cup of tea. Um, but the art style is really cute and unique. I like how the line art has variation in thicknesses, and also the use of colors and shading is really pretty. They use really unique colors and there's all kinds of different shading and it just looks really cool. Especially the backgrounds, they're super pretty. The music that plays in the anime and also just the overall style gives me slight Professor Layton vibes. I'm not sure if that makes sense, but there's just something about it that reminds me of Professor Layton. And I kind of like that because uh, I really like Professor Layton. Uh, so now I'm on to the line art. A lot of times line art is one of the easier parts when I'm doing these. But in this case, it was quite tricky. Like I mentioned, the line art has variation in how thick it is, so I had to reference the anime for where to make the line art thicker and where to make it thin. I kept switching between the G pen and the 4 effect line pen. I used the G pen for the thicker parts and the 4 effect line pen for the thinner parts. It's basically thick along the outside edges and also gets thick on the outside of some shapes like the sleeves. A lot of times screenshot edits take me a little under an hour or 45 minutes if they're really simple. But this one took me about an hour and a half. The characters are pretty detailed and also there is a decent amount of shading. I definitely wouldn't want to animate this anime. <laughs> it's so detailed. Oh, speaking of the animation, it is also really unique. It has moments where it kind of breaks up into like manga panels and it's really cool. And I quite like it. It's different. Now I'm on to the shading. I'm skipping filling in the base colors this time because the shading took me a while in this case. So I want to spend more time talking about that. I did notice that the shading was pretty detailed and there was a lot of it. But there were some details I didn't notice until I started shading. Like how the characters have the soft shading around their eyes and also blush. 
You don't often see soft shading being consistently applied to characters in anime, so I thought this was interesting. One part that was a bit tricky about applying the shading is that the coloring has a bit of texture to it. So when I use my eyedropper tool to select a color, I get slightly different colors depending on where I grab the color from because of the texture. I had to keep reselecting colors until it looked close enough to the originals. For my highlights in my hair, I used oval-like shapes. Nene's friend has more boxy shapes and Nene has circle shapes. I thought the circle was cute so I went with those. Also I keep not knowing if I should say Nene or like Nene. I watched mostly the sub and it sounds more like Nene. But then I accidentally clicked on the dub and I think she said Nene. Uh, so I don't know which one to say. <laughs> People get mad when I don't say the names right so sorry about that. One part that was really fun was mimicking the eye shading style of Nene's eyes. Once again, it is very unique so I wanted to give it a try. I fill in the irises with a dark color, but I make the pupil be really light. Then I take a light color and apply it along the bottom. Next I take another color and fill in the top, but I leave some dark color kind of in the middle of the iris. Then I put a dark color at the top middle and add little highlights. With the way the eyes are shaded, they look really detailed and it's kind of cool. Lastly, I needed to mimic the texture that is applied to the characters. This took me a few tries, but the one that turned out the best was I took some noise texture, made it a muted purple, set it to multiply, and then blurred it out a bit. I had to erase down the lighter parts because it was changing the colors a bit too much but it gave the darker areas that slight texture I was looking for. So here is me in toilet bound Hanako-kun. I hope all of you that are a fan of this anime like the result. I had a lot of fun drawing in this style. It's super adorable. It was also fun drawing myself into your lie in April and my roommate is a cat. Before we end, I want to thank my super wonderful patrons for their support. It means so much to me. And thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you all next week in my next video. Bye.